What do you think, at least in your opinion, did the introduction of trans fats to the diet um, do basically to the health, the health of the society? Yeah, it wasn't a bright spot of our, of our history, you know, and, and really you can't blame, uh, you know, it's hard to, it's, you know, people want to create conspiracy theories and big food and big pharma and this and that. And, you know, there's conversations to be had there. But this, this was uh, part of that industrialized movement, you know, culture was changing. People had TV dinners. They were eating canned foods, box foods. Uh, stores wanted things that were convenient and cost effective for, for their customers. And trans fats, you know, they su help products succeed on all those levels. It's, it's synthetic, so it's cheaper to produce. Anytime you can synthetically make something, it's cheaper to produce because you're not, you know, there's no middleman of pulling it and resourcing it from somewhere else. And uh, from what they knew at the time, it wasn't harmful. You know, it didn't seem to be causing issues. But as we know now, trans fats are, are sort of another uh, dead, you know, perfect storm in terms of heart disease risk because they not only raise your LDL or your bad cholesterol, but they also lower your good cholesterol, your HDL, simultaneously. And uh, they, they, you know, hands down, they've, uh, you know, they're, they're correlated with higher risk of heart disease, uh, but also been linked to potential uh, risk of cancers, uh, you know, weight control issues, uh, those sorts of things. So uh, we luckily, you know, it took us again a century, you know, of, of really grappling around this uh, with research. But uh, luckily, I think recently, they actually, the FDA moved to ban them completely. Uh, back in the early 2000s, they succeeded in labeling where they could not, they were forced to label trans fats. But again, if they had less than two grams per serving, they were able to list zero trans fats. And so consumers had to learn to look for the partially hydrogenated oil or the you know, fully hydrogenated oils. And that process is what creates these trans fats, which are sort of new to nature. And our body doesn't know what to do with them. And, uh, and I, I mention that because there are some natural trans fats. Uh, when you look at what are called ruminant animals, uh, your goats, your cows, uh, you know, they have different digestive system uh, fermentation uh, of converting you know, the grass and so forth into fuel. And out of that process, they actually create some natural trans fats, uh, one of them being conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, which if you look at a pasture-based uh, pasture uh, butter or uh, you know, product like that, it actually has a, a more golden yellow look to it, and it's because of the higher levels of CLA, which is a naturally occurring trans fat. And although it still may disrupt your lipids, your cholesterol levels the same. There, there actually have been sh some positive studies on CLA as to weight balance and uh, inflammation and so forth. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. It's not something I would lead with, uh, with a patient or anything like that. But uh, it does sort of, it's that synthetic, it's the commercialization. It's the, the profit motive of uh, having products last longer on the shelves. Uh, with something that you can synthetically produce as opposed to, you know, coconut trees in sure. Thailand or Philippines and that sort of thing.